Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, 12 Issues That Never Seem to Go Away When It Comes to Relationships. 12 Issues That Never Seem to Go Away, to be more specific, when it comes to troubled relationships, okay? These issues just stick around. The user, the abuser, the controlling person, the one who is in the relationship with this sort of person, every time you turn around, there's always something involving that person. And some of you all are so tired of having to go through these issues, but you're going to need to put your tiredness to action if you want to maintain your sanity, what little (laughs) is left you're going to have to get to a place where you are creating an exit strategy. I am tired of this. I'm not going to keep putting up with this. And this doesn't have to be an intimate relationship. This could be just dealing with a wayward son or daughter. This could be a friend of 20, 30 plus years that you're so over. So It's not just about, you know, who somebody is involved with intimately, but there are a lot of relationships that are troubled. Some folks have these sorts of relationships at a workplace. It's a work relationship, but it's a troubled one. And these problems just never seem to go away. The 12 are the denying that goes on, the defending, the assuming, the lying, controlling behaviors, name calling, being uh, competitive, unforgiving, ignoring, pouting, backstabbing, and manipulating, okay? Issues that I thought we were over this, but here they come around again. I thought that we had this nipped in the bud, but here we go again. So someone is acting in ways where they're denying something that they said, something that they did. They're just not going to be honest. Every time you turn around, they are coming up with just one more thing, okay? That they didn't say, didn't do, and you're wrong about. So once again, there's the confrontation. You're finding yourself having to prove your case, okay? That's energy draining. That's energy draining. And that's why some people eventually throw their hands up and walk away. The next is the defending. That person is quick to defend others, whether outside of the relationship, okay? Or affiliated with you too. And when it comes to the folks who's closest to them, the folks who are doing for them, helping them out. Nope. Not even thinking about defending them when the lies show up, when people are talking ugly, but they'll defend others. Okay. These are some of those hidden things at times that you don't pay close attention to until they manifest themselves in big ways where you say, I'm not going to stay quiet any longer. I'm going to talk to him about every time I tell him something he wants to deny. Or every time I come over here and I have something to say, she wants to defend. Okay. And I know the truth. I see the truth. Another, assume, assumption, assuming, right? Quick to assume that the person that they're with, for instance, if it's you, quick to assume that your intentions are wrong. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I know what you meant by that. Mm-hmm. I know what you meant. What did I mean by that? Okay. They're assuming that you had ill in- intent. They're assuming that they're like you doing, or, or um, they're assuming that you are like them, that you're up to no good that you're telling lies, that you're shaming, that you're blaming, okay, that you got a secret, that you're covering up. And so they're putting all of this on you to keep from 
you seeing things for what they really are, okay? Lying, this is a big one. They're quick to come up with a story, for instance, to keep from admitting the truth, okay? No, 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 uh uh-uh. Um, this is what happened. And then meanwhile, you pick that story apart, you unpack it and you know, they're just straight up lying. Why you do that? What, what you mean? Why you tell lies? No, that's not what I was doing. Yes, that was because I just proved everything that you just said is incorrect. Plus we got witnesses here. Now, didn't he say, yeah, he said, and on that day, weren't you there when he, yep, he sure did. Oh, Why you always want to start? Why you want to come up with? Why you want to (laughs) bring? Some of you all know how this goes. And there's a full-blown argument because that liar doesn't like to be exposed. Here we go. Another trouble that never seems to go away with these users, abusers, and controlling individuals is control. They're quick to say and do things to keep from you doing things. So they'll come up with a long list as to why you shouldn't do something, but You come along with your long list and they're saying, you're trying to control me. You're trying to tell me what to do. Well, isn't that what you've been doing all this time? Hmm? It's controlling me. You always come up with some reason as to why I shouldn't go over here. Why I shouldn't do this. Why I shouldn't do that. And some of you all, you've been in these relationships for years where they may have done it subtly control you with a smile on their face, pat you on the back so that it doesn't feel like there's power and control, but there is, there is every time you make a move and somebody got something to say about it, they're controlling you. Every time you want to go somewhere and they come up with reasons as to why you shouldn't go, they're controlling you. You see, a lot of these people are consistent in what they do. And some folks who are blindsided, gullible, so in love with, never see it. But we see it on the outside looking in. I could sit down with some of you all right now and tell you who keeps playing a game of denial, defending, assuming, lying, and controlling you. And some of you all love these folks so much that you would go and defend the demonic. You would defend the child of darkness. You would be ready to go upside my head for speaking truth to you. Lord Jesus. Name calling. Okay. They're quick to negatively respond when you are providing how you feel. Okay. Uh, what you're going through. You may be critical of them and out comes all sorts of names. Now, why do we have to go to elementary school with this where you're calling me a bunch of names? You big head, you stupid, you fool, you idiot, you B-I-T-C-H. And some of you all got friends who love using these sorts of words. And then they call themselves, I'm just lad, I'm just joking You know, can't you see I'm smiling, I'm laughing about it. I don't like you calling me names. I don't care if you are smiling about it. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God too. But you just taking it too far. You're just too serious. Oh, so because I want what comes out your mouth to be respectful, just like you want me to say respectful things to you. You got issue with that? I'm telling you all, some of you all, you don't have good friends. You really don't. If they can't respect you when you say you don't like certain things, they're not much of a friend. I'm sorry. (laughs) We got to keep it real. Some of these so-called lovers, partners, whoever they are to you, and they keep calling you out of your name. Your mother didn't name you that, you see. But they think it's cute. They think it's, it's, uh, you know, sweet. Back in the day, um, older gentlemen would call their wives all sorts of names, um, like, you know, um, these like bird names, okay, or some type of animal name. Um, and the same thing, you know, th- these were supposed to be terms of endearment. But as time went on, we unpacked all of that. And we realized that no, what that was what they were doing is they were keeping these women in a frame of mind where, you know, you're not like me, the big, burly, strong, you know, great, wonderful guy. You know, you are so weak and feeble and you need me, you know, and it did wonders for his ego. But what did all of those little cute bird names or whatever do or animal names do for her? 
it just kept her in a lower mindset, a self-esteem issue, um, always talking about how she needs and and uh, she can't do anything without her wonderful, strong, burly, you know. And in some relationships, it worked because, you know, there was this give and take. There was equal shared responsibilities. People knew how to respect one another. And there wasn't these names that were being, you know, hurled at one another. You know, if anything, there was names that were uplifting and strong, you know, and made people feel good about themselves, you see. But we got people who know they're calling names because deep down inside, they really are going through some issues with you. OK, and you don't check them because you've been that B.I.T.C.H. for years. OK, yeah, I'm a proud one, too. Well, you know, really, this isn't what God expects of us. You know, he really doesn't. Um, the competitive one, right, the one who's always competing, they're quick to talk about how great um you know they are and they don't mind comparing um their achievements you know to yours <laughs> you know some people like this especially during holiday events where yes my children they're doing this they're doing that uh your children oh <laughs> what are they into mm, okay well anyway um so back to my children you see they're competing using their job oh I, I oh my gosh I made so much money last year how much money did you make oh yeah do you need some help you see this sort of thing um they're competitive about who's got the bigger house you know there's been movies about this sort of thing where the competition between the siblings um one of uh, the movies that pop into my mind was Johnson's Family Vacation where Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey are battling it out, you know, in front of their parents, you know, who bought mama this, who bought daddy this, you know, just constant competition. And sometimes, unfortunately, the parents have a lot to do with that because there was the bragging about what this child did versus what the other child did and how this one loves me more than you and and this one didn't give me as many problems as the other and so there's by default this competition that occurs between siblings and it is unhealthy it creates all sorts of division you also provoke your children to wrath and bible clearly states that we're not to do that okay we do not provoke our children to wrath and making them competitive you know, between one another is, is not a good thing at all. And it just leads to further division. Same thing happens at the workplaces. Some of these workplaces, I know that maybe years ago, the competitive model worked, but now you got a whole new crew of people and it's not working. If anything, it's making people quit their jobs. Um, you want your greatest, you want your best. Well, it's just going to be you and that greatest, best, wonderful, A-list or whoever around you because the rest of them are like, I can't compete with that and I'm not going to try. All right. The next is those who are unforgiving. These troubles, once again, they just don't seem to go away with troubled people. So we've got this one who they are quick to avoid opportunities to forgive. They're still hung up on the wrongs that uh, have been committed against them, against you maybe. Maybe you got folks around you that I'm not forgiving her. You know, well, I forgave her and I've moved on. Well, I haven't, you see. So you just like to keep stuff going. No, I don't like to keep stuff going. I'm just like that. So, <laughs> you know, you can forgive whoever you want to forgive, but I'm not. So they're still holding on to those wrongs. Moving on, we've got those that like to ignore. They ignore. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to get into it. I'm just going to ignore. They know how to shut you down. They're quick to ignore you, your partner, your people around you, you know, <laughs> their own children, their spouse. You might be this way. Just ignoring. In a bad mood, ignore. Trying to comfort. Nah, I think I'll ignore. Don't want to be a part of this a group, that one. Yeah, I ignore. Don't you want to talk? Don't you want to give somebody an explanation for why you do what you do? Yeah, I think it's just better to ignore. Okay. 
That silent treatment business has destroyed marriages, just so you know. It's also created division, either short-term or long-term, with your children. Yeah, it worked for some people for some time, and then eventually folks learn it, they receive it, and then they do it to you. And now it looks like, huh, your way of dealing with issues has backfired. Folks don't like that. They really don't. It's too much game plan, mind game, manipulations and stuff that go on with people. And so, yeah, that's why the man across the street or the woman down the street, they tend to have a pretty good relationship with theirs because they're not playing all these games. They're not doing all this stuff. You know, you got people at the workplace who they have a great relationship with managers, supervisors, coworkers, and so forth because they don't do all of this. Okay. Once again, recap, denying, defending, assuming, lying, controlling, name calling, competing, unforgiving, ignoring, pouting is what is next. So we got some folks who are quick to make folks feel uncomfortable by pouting, okay, because they didn't get their way. It's like the little two-year-old, I'm not going anywhere. I want to be with, I want to be with my toy. And they start pouting and they're crying or I want to stay here. I don't want to go there. And they lit up the whole store. And now we're standing in line because that little child is used to getting his or her way. And that mother or father doesn't know how to parent in such a way where they can shut that child up and make sure that they never act that way again in the store you see pouting pouting so now that two-year-old is now a 20-some year old a 30 a 40 a 50 plus year old and still taking their lips and pouting like a child that's a clear sign you're dealing with an immature person if they can't seem to control their facial muscles Or they do it on purpose so that you'll react. Stop reacting to these pouty faces. Stop. Now, this is where I will encourage some ignoring. (laughs) Oh, you're an adult. You can open up your mouth and talk to me. Your pouty face and you're staring me down and you're looking at me from a distance with your mouth all turned up. It's not going to make me come over there and do what other people have done for years. Oh, what's wrong, John? What's wrong, Tim? What's wrong, Pete and Bob? Oh, what's wrong, Lindsay? You see, I'm just making up names. What's wrong? Oh, that's so terrible, Sally. Oh. You see, let's stop with that. Grown people acting like children. The next is backstabbers or backstabbing going on. Quick to talk negatively about others behind their back. You know who these people are. They're around you. You might be one of them. Why do you have to be that way, right? You just can't wait to go and backstab on someone you were smiling in her face you were talking about how lovely and great and wonderful she is her children are you talked about her beautiful home her car and meanwhile there's some hate rising up and you gotta run and tell somebody about the littlest of things or someone's doing that sort of thing to you and how does that make you feel does it make you feel special does it make you feel good no it makes you feel like you can't trust people right? And we got those. And then of course, the last is these people, they're quick to twist the truth. These are the manipulators. Okay. Manipulating is going on. They're quick to twist the truth to get you or your partner or someone else, right? To behave the way they want. Okay. Or the way they want you to behave. So they know how to make you feel bad and they exaggerate issues all right to get you to respond to react they say things in such a way to make you feel some kind of way so that you will be drawn into whatever they're talking about okay so this sort of stuff goes on around us and sometimes we're brought into it we don't want to be brought into you know this sort of thing but it happens and when you see it you need to nip it in the bud we're not going to pretend like the elephant isn't in the room that this person is not doing some things you know to cause uh, a breakup to cause division you know maybe they got a whole crew of people that's working against you okay or maybe god forbid maybe some of you all are doing these sorts of things and working against other people 
But this trouble never seems to go away with some people. And I will tell you that these are reasons why someone will distance themselves from you or from those that you love. These are good reasons as to why some folks will write people up at the workplace and put them on that fast track to getting rid of them because people get tired of the denying that goes on. They don't want to be held accountable. They get tired of folks defending negative, wrong behaviors. They get tired of folks assuming the worst about other people. Okay. They get tired of folks lying on them as well as others. They get tired of people controlling them, micromanaging to the point where folks are in tears. They get tired of folks calling them names because they're frustrated. Okay. They get tired of the competition, unhealthy types of competitions that go on, the unforgiveness of managers and supervisors and leaders. There's folks who are ready to run out the door because you keep ignoring them. Okay. Some of you all, you witness this sort of thing. You got pouty faces, backstabbers, and manipulators. You want to move some people out quickly all of this stuff is needed in order to do just that. And why would you want to do that when all you got to do is just sit down and talk to folk. And if they don't want to listen, then you just take the necessary action according to the handbook, which is a series of mistakes, a series of problems. Okay, we got to walk this person out the door, but we don't support this sort of thing. We don't come up with orchestrated plans as to move people out in these sorts of ways. We don't come up with orchestrated plans to create a separation or divorce. You know, what God has put together, no man put us under. But we've got these sorts of things that go on with siblings going after other people's partners, with um, family members. Not liking a family member. So I'm going to make it real difficult. I'm going to cause them to not to even deal with each other no more. Sometimes it's the big payback. Somebody has all of this as a recipe for disaster on purpose because they're not allowing God to avenge. They are <clears throat> orchestrating the plan to avenge Lord Jesus. And th this is the recipe. So this is how people do things in an evil way you see i mean we see this sort of thing in our uh, government you got politicians who do this sort of thing it's strategic you've got leaders business owners investors you know doctors and scientists and folks that are like crabs in a barrel and so what can I do in order to get the, the next, uh, the, the next um, position? What can I do to get top, stop, uh, top spot? What can I do in order to get monies, okay, for my particular um, a project that I'm working on, you see? So they come up with a series of things to make it difficult. So somebody comes with a hard truth, a real truth. Mm, I'm going to deny it. I'm going to lie about it. I'm going to defend my actions. Mm-hmm. If anything, I'm going to assume some things about them and then they'll go away. I don't like this nosy journalist. I don't like, you know, these people coming and holding me accountable. They think they're going to hold me accountable for what we created, for what we invented, for what we started. You see, oh, I'm going to put some names out there. I'm going to call them a bunch of names and I'm going to get all of my flying monkeys to do the same thing and bully them to death. So then this way they will never want to attack us again or come after us or expose us. Oh, yes. And then um, we want to take all of the business. Yes. Away from this particular company. So we're going to make sure that we put out all sorts of negativity about their product, about their service. Mm hmm. Because we've got to remain competitive. We've got to be the top dog. You know, uh, some folks will even go so far as to steal people's ideas, right? Oh, you know, it wasn't enough to have this idea, but now we're going to take hers and we're going to take his and we're going to expound upon it. They have systems and tools in place that that's all they're doing. You say, how is it that they got my idea? Because if you use a free platform, that's how they got your idea. 
If you use a pay, a for pay platform, that's how they got your idea. They got people who spot the algorithms all day, every day. They got people who sit behind, they being all of these different businesses, got folks that they pay handsomely to monitor, to watch, to pay attention to the algorithms, to pay attention to the search engines, to see what people are looking for, to see what people want so that they can create their next big inventions. So that once again, they got your money. And meanwhile, you who are the aspiring business owner, the aspiring entrepreneur, you can't get ahead because they are, they're already 10, 15, 20 years ahead of you. Okay. I just want a piece of the pie, someone says. And by the time you try to get a piece of the pie, it's already been inundated with everybody who they wanted in and left you out. Your community doesn't have the resources and that was by design. Your community, they held up the licensing and that was by design. Your community, they don't have certain things in stock because that's by design. Okay. They charge an arm and a leg in your community because they know what other people have done in order to create business, in order to grow business, in order to take business from other groups. And so they've already come up with systems to keep from you ever having a successful business. So this sort of thing with the denying, no, that's not what we're doing, but that's what they're doing. The defending, oh, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. We've never done anything like that. Um, you know, uh, you might want to look at and meanwhile, no, we saw, we, we uncovered, we found out, we know the tools you see. Well, the reason why we did now here comes defending the reason why we did it was because, or sometimes there's no reason given because we don't owe you no explanation. <laughs> we don't owe you anything. You see the assumptions that take place. You know, well, maybe you guys, the reason why you're accusing us is because you did this and you did that. Meanwhile, we don't have the resources. We don't have the intellectual capabilities of, we don't have the tools. What are you talking about? How can you assume things on people that you purposely made sure that they don't have the resources in order to be a success like you? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you thought once again, it was just partner that we were going to talk about and family and friends. No, I take my messages next level as the Lord leads. And we've got this sort of thing that happens in various cities, towns, boroughs, states, nationally and internationally, where big business is doing all of these things. Plus some the evil is all over what they're producing, what they're inventing, what they're coming up with, their next plan, their next agenda for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years down the line. Some of us won't even be above ground when they make it even harder for you to live, for you to create, for you to build because the information is being inputted into the internet and it is the mind reader. It is the mind reader because anything that pops into your mind, what do you do? You type it into the internet. And so it knows how to pick all of the information based on whatever somebody is searching for behind the scenes and know how many times a day, how many minutes that folks are looking up information and it knows how to, dis how to dispense that information so that humans can come up with yet another business, yet another plan. Okay. Another marketing, uh, system process in order to get information in front of you. How is it that they knew literally minutes ago that that's what I put because you put it in, you researched it, but I didn't research specific details. You researched enough that AI picked it up and now they got an article for it. They got a social media post for it. They got a website for it. They got a blog for it. They got everything that your little heart wanted for your idea. And they've already gotten the patents and the licenses within a 48 hour period. And sometimes sooner than that, depending on if there's other people involved with that plan, with that project, with that idea already. Okay. And so then now that that's out there, now that you see it, Okay, just using you, a listener, as an example. Unforgiveness sits in. I will never forget these people for what they did. They ripped me off. They did this. They did that to me. 
Now you're the one who is on the other side. You're calling names, you know, you're shaming, you're blaming, you know, you're doing all sorts of stuff. Okay. Some of you all, you turned into the backstabber when you left that company and ended up taking the ideas and the process and symptom uh, and uh, systems and giving them to the competition. Mm -hmm. The manipulators, right? You became just what you didn't want to become. You became just what was done to you. This is how enemies are created. This is how foes are created. This is how people end up getting involved in sin. They become just what they speak out against. Some folks say, well, it's, that's not so bad. I mean, the people were wrong to begin with. But yeah, wrong plus wrong, we already know, only creates more wrong. At some point, somebody needs to get off of the boat of confusion and go on that boat of peace. I call a truce. Let me put my white flag up. Okay. Lord Jesus. So when we put scripture in on it, since you've listened this long, we got to talk about the scriptures. For those of you all of faith, there are those who do the manipulation. What does scripture say about it? Matthew seven fifteen says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. So God knows nobody is saying that God doesn't know, right? But God knows now. If God knows that this sort of thing is going on, don't you think he's going to give you the resources? He's going to give you, you know, everything that you need in order to fight that thing in Jesus name. Second Timothy three, one through five, but understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. Okay. So what I just talked to you about these 12 troubling things in relationships, partnerships, business, nationally, internationally, that never seem to go away, right? Well, where are we? We're in the last days. These are difficult times. That's difficult subjects to be able to talk, to confront someone about, okay? For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money. A lot of that rooted in money, right? Especially when it comes to business. Lovers of self, somebody's denying why, <laughs> because I'm not going to let this person tell me about me. Somebody is defending his or herself. Uh, I mean, how dare you come over here and tell me this and tell me that, right? They love themselves. So they're going to do anything and everything to protect themselves. Okay. They're going to do anything and everything to protect their money. They love that money. Some folks sleep with money. Some folks hang up money all over the, over their house. Some folks, that's all they talk about is money. Uh, there's all sorts of mind, uh, training and so forth related to money, making money, building up things, you know, associated with money, investing money, spending money, saving money. It's always about money with some people, right? And so they will deny, they will defend, they will assume things, they will lie, they will control, they'll name call, they'll compete, they'll be unforgiving, they'll ignore, they'll pout, they'll backstab, they'll manipulate for money. What won't man do for money? You see? And so scripture clearly tells us, hey, there's lovers of money. They're proud. People who are proud. People who are arrogant, people who are abusive, they're disobedient to their parents. So they're doing all of these different things. And when we unpack and look a little closer using scripture, we see that underneath it all, we got a proud person. We got an arrogant person. We've got an abusive person. We've got somebody who's disobedient to their parents. Why is my son? Why is my daughter doing this? Nine times out of 10 it's rooted, right? In something that they're hiding. So they're denying it. They're defending it. Something that they're do doing, but they're going to reverse what they're doing. Put it on you, right? Assume you're doing it because, well, I mean, mom, you've done other things. You've done, look, this isn't about me. <laughs> this isn't about, you know, me, says a father. This is about you, you see. Mm -hmm. Ungrateful, unholy. 
heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. So I see evidence and proof somebody's denying and they repeatedly do this sort of thing and they're not owning up to what they're doing. They're not owning up to how they're so defensive and they're assuming wrong about you or, or, you know, someone else, right? Um, I, I see that they're, uh, lying. I see that they're being controlling and they're calling you names and they're, you know, um, being competitive and unforgiving and ignoring and they're pouting and they're backstabbing and they're manipulating it. and all of these things that scripture says is all around them. Why would I continue to be around them? Cause I can hear somebody now saying, well, if I see all of this and I know it's all around me, what do I do? Scripture clearly tells us three words, avoid such people. And you pray and you ask the Lord, what's my exit strategy? You pray, you ask the Lord, what do I do to safeguard my money? Since I know that they're a lover of money. What do I do in Jesus mighty name to teach these children in such a way so that they'll stop being disobedient? Lord, I need your help. I'm around unholy, heartless individuals, treacherous people. You know, they're reckless. They're swollen with conceit. How do I get out of this? Lord Jesus, I didn't take an oath to be around this sort of crazy. <laughs> I didn't give up all of my assets, you know, my time, my energy, my talents for this type of crazy, you see? And so God, he has a way of doing some things where you could exit walking out. You could exit with broken legs. You could exit six feet deep in your grave, but you exited. Hallelujah. Because sometimes leaving establishments, leaving associations, leaving relationships is not without consequence. I've got to drill this in some people's heads because they want God sometimes to just let them go. Right. Without no type of consequence, you know, sometimes it does happen, but oftentimes it doesn't. When I got out of an abusive relationship, I had to go out swinging. OK, police had to be involved. So I don't have that story where I just walked out of it and everything was great. When I had situations with jobs, you know, sometimes it wasn't just about giving a two weeks notice and then they're just going to let you go. No, they made two weeks of hell. So I learned with some organizations when you got all this unholy and ungrateful and heartless, nah, -uh, we're not giving no two week notice. We're getting out. Okay. And we're getting out with a clear conscience, no guilt trips. No mind games, no anything. I'm getting out and it's without notice. So for some of you all, I realize why you tell sons and daughters, for instance, to give a two week notice. But if there's toxic situations, that two weeks could be hell for them. OK, if I'm around the unholy, the heartless, the unappeasable, the slanderous, and I go and I tell them I'm jumping ship, I'm leaving. What you think they're going to do? They're going to start taking all of, all of their negative energy and putting it upon me. Give her more work since she wants to leave. Mm -hmm. Make her life difficult. You know what? Let's, let's go ahead on and, and um, you know, say she stole some stuff and we really stole some stuff. You see, you don't play with people like that. You know, you don't sit up there and, and play by the book. So no, I don't encourage when people tell me that they're around abusive, toxic, controlling, crazy making people, I don't encourage them to stay. I don't encourage them to go back. I don't encourage them to give them notice. Matter of fact, I say leave overnight when folks sleep and don't give them no address. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Not where they can come and find you. So we don't play those silly little games that some folks play. And you know why they play, because it's in their best interest to know where you are. It's in their best interest to take your money. It's in their best interest of shame and blame. OK, they know why they do what they do. You don't know it all. All you know is I want my way out. Hallelujah. Praise be to the one true God. I want my way out. I'm glad somebody's still listening. God, he wants you to keep listening. You see, I know sometimes the messages are long, but there's a lot to convey because it's not like you get to sit down with me and talk for hours and hours on end. So we got to uncover and it's not like you got the money sometimes to sit down and talk with a therapist. So that's why we got to go through this process. We put scripture on it because we know that scripture has proven to be correct time and time again. You see, these people, sometimes they're not ugly. They're not dark. They're not disturbing. 
they appear to be angels of light. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen says, and no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Okay. So for some of you all, you may have an image in your mind of somebody who is very, you know, mysterious and strange looking and kind of like a Hollywood movie, a psychopath, a sociopath type of individual. But no, a lot of times these people look friendly. They look harmless. They can be a grandmother with grandchildren. They can be a mother who's beautiful, right? But very much cutting, evil, dark, okay? It can be someone who you least expect, who is a pillar of the community, has done so much, you would never suspect that they were evil and dark. But there are plenty of them out here. The Lord showed me. He showed me um, how some of these men, you know, um, that committed just, oh my God, terrible acts on women, how nice looking they were. You see, even the man who abused me years ago, he wasn't ugly. He wasn't ugly at all. Some of you all, you would have looked at him and said, oh, that's a nice man. He would have never done that. He would have never choked her. He would have never suffocated her. He would have never cheated on her. He would have never, you know, done all sorts of dark, nasty things to her. But he did. He did. You see. And then when I started fighting back, there was a dark side that <laughs> showed up on me. You see. So. No, never, never sit up there and assume that because somebody looks a certain way that they would never harm, never hurt. Some of you are so deceived. You're so deceived. You know, um, your parents, your grandparents, and you're deceived by some of those members of your family. And then you find out after they pass away how dark and how disturbing they really are. Because mm -hmm. we had some of, we had past tense, we had some of those in a family. Okay, some we still do, but I'm talking about some of the other ones who, they, um, for, for decades, for many, many decades, nobody suspected that they were liars, that they were thieves, that they were murderers. Okay. But then the truth started to show up once they were six feet deep in their grave. Some folks, they felt bold enough to start telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So you, you could be shaking hands with somebody who just killed somebody days, weeks, months ago, years ago. Lord Jesus, you see? Matthew 24 and 4, and Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray. So the evidence and proof is there. So why allow these people to lead you astray? Okay. Pay people like this will say they love you. They, you. You got 12 different things that were given to you. Does that sound like love? Absolutely not. Oh, I love my employees. Oh, I love my daughter. Oh, I love my husband, my wife. I love them. You love them, right? Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 13, four through seven. Somebody needs to be reminded what love looks like. Okay. Some folks may never have read this. So it's important that I get this out here. Thank you. Oh, heavenly father. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So that victim who endured all of that, that was love, but she's got to go. She's got to be free. That man who went through so much with that witchy woman, <laughs> okay, He's got to get free. We know he loves her, but he needs to let go and let God, you see. But we know that the abuser and user who denies and defends and assumes and lies and is controlling and all the rest. We know he doesn't love. We know she doesn't love. So we cannot keep that person in the circle. We cannot keep giving that person information. We cannot keep paying for and doing for and helping out in so many different ways. We've got to cut away and cut off. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm tired of you being blindsided. I'm tired of you sitting up there assuming that somebody loves you and cares for you when God has clearly showed you that that is not love. Hallelujah. Praise be to the one true God. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. They call themselves a Christian. I can hear somebody defending the evil already. They call themselves a Christian. They say they're sweet. They say they're nice. They did some nice things for you in the past, but yet they're doing all these other things that you know full well is not of God. Galatians 5, 19, 21. 19 through 21. 
Now the works of the flesh are evident. I'm challenging some folks on their so-called, you know, loving, wonderful, sweet, kind person. Hmm. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things, this nice, sweet, kind, this is my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, Nicole. I mean, really, blah, blah, blah. These people who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I stand by the word. I support the word. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Quit defending the users and abusers. Quit defending yourself. Quit saying that you don't do when God clearly shows us time and time again, when we have slipped over the years, when we have fallen by the wayside, when we have been sinners, don't sit up here and try to tell me who been there and done it, that these people love like and are so wonderful and nice. And I don't know what I'm talking talking about when Galatians 5 19 through 21 puts them in 4k 3d on blast boom boom that's it there is no debate there is no debate and I get tired of folks who every now and again their users and abusers want to defend their womanizing ways that particular audio Oh my goodness, how many people have gone through there? Wanted to defend their narcissistic ways. Wanted to defend their controlling mother. Wanted to go after me and say, I don't like the tone of your voice or Nicole, it seems like you got this and that. Don't observe me or assume things about me that you know doggone well. If I'm reading a scripture, I'm holding myself accountable too. So don't go there. You just don't want to deal with the facts for what they really are. That's what it is because you love that man. You love that woman. You want to keep sleeping with that one. I had to be convicted a long time ago by God himself. You're not married. You can't keep sleeping with that person. And God created so much division that I had no choice but to either get married or you going to lose everything. Now, that's the God I serve. Some of you all aren't ready for Yahweh. You're not ready for Jehovah Jireh. You're not ready for Jehovah Nisi. You're not ready for the great I am. God is all encompassing. He loves us so much, but he also will not let us get away with anything. You hear me? You, gr you bring God into these things. You start talking about, I'm praying in Jesus name that I will no longer have to deal with this person in my family who keeps sitting up here manipulating and backstabbing pouting and ignoring and being unforgiving I don't want to deal with these things when you bring God into it he's going to expose you too on what you're aiding and abetting mm -hmm. he going to expose you too none of us are so perfect and so good and we got it going on I tell you sometimes it's hard to live with me because I got God in on this <laughs> and God, he tells me the truth about myself. So don't ever think that, Oh, Nicole is just because you don't want to deal with the fact that you are Lord Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you. A heavenly father. We got to stop this lying about, Oh, I am this. And I am that. And God says, have you seen yourself lately? There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. That's haughty eyes. And you know the eyes follow with the denying, the defending, and assuming, the lying, and all that. You can see their eyes. Come on now. Don't look away. Look at their eyes every now and again. You'll see. And then you look away. Mm -hmm. I don't care how pretty their eyes are. Because some people, they get drawn in just on how pretty somebody's eyes are. And that person is just doing all these evil things to you. But you can't let go of them pretty eyes, those snake looking eyes. Because some of them got them. Not only are they dealing with demons on the inside, but it comes out through their eyes. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. And we know that there's plenty in mass media all around the world, some of you all knew that I was going to go there, who messed around with DNA, who messed around with blood, and they shed innocent blood. There is a hell for them. And some folks, it's a hell on earth for them right now because of all of the lies that they told us. 
and you keep exposing some of you all their er their errors. You keep exposing. Oh, you said this was safe. You said this was right. You said this was good. You see how the media denied how they defended, how they assumed, how they lied, had family members con being controlling when all this pandemic situ uh, stuff showed up, calling us names. If you don't do this, if you don't do that, how there was even competition of who got how many shots, how many jabs? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's a competition. Oh, girl, I got two. How many you got? I got three. How many you got? I got five. How many you got? I got them all. And now I'm sick. Oh, okay. Let's ignore her. Ooh, uh-huh. Isn't that a powerful example for somebody? Aren't you glad you stayed long enough to hear this part? So there's folks who are ignoring even within the confusion. I'm not talking to her. Why? Because I, I, um, there, there's some things that, you know, it don't apply to me. And she wants to tell me that I shouldn't. And I, and no, you're not going to go there and tell me what I'm not going to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't see things right for years later. And so then years later showed up and now we're seeing some things. We're seeing some vicious things. We're seeing some things that funeral homes, right directors people responsible for all sorts of embalming people responsible for caretaking people responsible for trying to nurse you back to health they can't even explain in full detail i'm just doing my job and then you got others who i'm just going to ignore what i see because i got too much on the line i'm just going to deny because I told them I would never say, I took an oath. I'm going to say some things. Mm -hmm. So some backstabbing is going on within groups. And folks find out that there's some backstabbing going on. And so they don't take too kindly. And so there's the shedding of innocent blood. But God, he hates. He hates what's going on. He's not supporting it. So don't put God in on stuff that you know he's not supporting. Innocent blood? Come on now. He created the blood. His one and only begotten son shed blood on the cross. God know blood all too well. God hates haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans. That's what I just exposed just now. Wicked plans, not in full detail, but y'all know, cause some of you all were a part of it. A heart that devises wicked plans, deep down inside, somebody said it's too many people. And so we all got sucked into that. It's been going on for years, for years. I've been on this channel for 14 plus years. The early audio messages, we talked about folks who were in support of population control. And we tried to tell you in so many different ways that they're coming for you. But you all was like, eh, it's for the greater good. And it was, was a bigger plan than some thought. It went beyond just controlling a populace in terms of how many people walk this planet it was about controlling a populace through and through and they're still working on more to come we re re we are resetting the nations says the establishment through and through because the old models are just what they are old we are growing in leaps and bounds and we got to make some things happen. And if you're not on board, then ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Some of it we were in agreement with because we did see that some of the old paradigms were just not working, especially when it came to some of what the ministers were saying and doing that prosperity gospel foolishness. You all, y'all, you guys can great reset that, <laughs> right? We sat up here, we was in support of some of these things where these communities that if they don't want to get to work and they don't want to do the types of things that need to get to be done and they just want to kill themselves up. Okay, well then go ahead on and reset that. 
and we were in support of some of the things that folks were doing in terms of making the body stronger, you know, more agile, making, you know, minds stronger, some intelligence going on. And we're like, hey, you know, you can reset that, make man smarter, you know, <laughs> stronger. You know, he's 40 some years old and still playing ball. Okay. You know, seems like there's some promise there or she's 50 some years old and she can have babies loving that. But then we had some wicked folks in the camp, Lord Jesus. And them wicked folks were like, we can do what we want to do, how we want to do it. And they opened up all sorts of portals and Satan said, well, I'm glad you let me in because I am about killing, stealing and destroying. Don't you read your Bible? Lord Jesus. So the plans, the wicked plans, there they are. Feet that make haste to run to evil. Well, I'm going to run to evil because there's money in, in it. And I, I, I want to make sure that I support my family. And so that's what many of a celebrity did. But I thought you were a Christian. So why are you running to that meeting where all the evil people are? And why are you bending over and doing evil? And why are you bowing down too? And why are you doing some of the most despicable things that if the video is uncovered concerning you, that we would have our mouths drop? Uh-huh. Yeah. Talking out of two sides of their mouth. Feet that make haste to run to evil. And a false witness who breathes out lies. And one who sows discord among brothers. These are all the things that the Lord hates. So don't let people go and cherry pick scripture or people who just come up with things off the top of their mind or because they read some guru's book. This is what our God, the one who I serve, the one who you all every now and again, you're like, wait a minute. I know that's nothing but God who used her to create that message. This is what he hates. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Please study that. So that you don't get deceived by these people with their grandiose ideas and their satanic philosophies and Luciferian worship and so forth. Okay? Yes. We've been practicing what we preach for a long time. And I thank you, O Heavenly Father, for once again downloading information in my spirit that resonates with some individuals who know what they got themselves mixed up in. And I pray that there will be a swift cleanup and that God... You will be with them every step of the way, that you will give them courage beyond man's comprehension, that you will give them truth beyond man's, man's understanding, and that you will uplift them and move them forward like a soldier on the front lines of battle. In Jesus' mighty name, put your angels of protection all around them. Protect their families, protect their assets. And even if they lose everything as a result of the consequences of sin, may they come up strong and mighty like Job, that their next chapter will be great. In Jesus' name. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel. Thank you to those of you all who have been blessings in my life and not curses. And we ask that God deal with those who are. Thank you.